Okay, let's talk about our patient today. Our patient today is a dentist. Young lady, a preeminent lecturer. The dental hygienist from Bulgaria. Buffalo, New York. Atlanta, Oklahoma, Vancouver, Canada, Boston, Kansas City, San Francisco, Montreal, Munich, Germany, London, and Santa Maria, California. Now we're going to place 14 lumineers, 8 lumineers, 10 lumineers, 6 lumineers, 10, 2, 8, 8, 10, 10, 8, 10, 8 lumineers today on our patient. And now we're not treating teeth anymore. We're treating smiles. Isn't that beautiful? So let's look at the transformation from where we started and where we are. Our patient today is an example of that. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to a live webcast on our patient today. Uh, we're going to place uh, 10 porcelain veneers on uh, someone that uh, appears that she doesn't need anything. Uh, the only thing is she wants something. Be sure you're prepared ahead of time. Take a look here at what Jessica has set up on the table. Looks complicated, but it's not. Jessica has treated these uh, lumineers with serenade prime and with porcelain conditioner the porcelain conditioner is and you put that on first citric acid then you put on the serenade prime and activate the silane and that's how you get the bond between the ultra bond and the porcelain and then the bond will bond the ultra bond to the tooth how many of you use magnification i'm using four power magnification i'm working on a patient that's not anesthetized I want sharp vision. You're going to watch me place these 10 porcelain veneers in about one minute uh, with the sapphire light. Well, Gordon Christian says it has three of them. And he said, working without a sapphire light is like working with a slow speed handpiece. Okay, the other next little tip is taking a good impression. We like to recommend the Invisalign technique. It's a double wash. We use the Illumineers impression material. So what you want to do is pour your model, your first model, before your patient leaves the office. That way, if you're not satisfied with some of the gingival margins, you can retake the impression rather than wait two, three days to have that happen. Sometimes they say, you know, it fits the model, but it doesn't fit the teeth. Took the impression out too soon. Always let the impression stay an extra 30 to 60 seconds longer. Jessica has already polished her teeth with porcelain polishing paste. And the reason we do that, it contains an enzyme in there, papain, to break up the protelaginous material called plaque. So the first thing we're going to do here in this step is we're going to put some paint on dental dam on the lingual side of your teeth. It's the same thing you use when you're doing chair side bleaching. And wherever I put the paint on dental dam, the ultra bond and the tenure won't adhere. Give it a three second burst. Close your eyes. The best way to protect your eyes is to close them. Now we're not trying to sped a, set a speed record here. We're just trying to not waste time because your time is limited and show you what you could be doing in your practice tomorrow. If you had the patient, well, you couldn't do it tomorrow, you'd be taking impressions tomorrow, but you could begin doing it right away. So well, you'll see why that's so important to do this because it really facilitates cleanup. Now we're going to start surface preparation on the enamel. So there I'm going to use etch and seal Etch and seal is 25-30% phosphoric acid with aluminum oxalate in it. And the purpose of the aluminum oxalate is so that if you're working on your operative patients and you have dentin tubules exposed, then the aluminum oxalate helps seal them and prevent sensitivity.
Now the etch is complete, nice and frosty. And we're going to put Tenure AB on here. Tenure AB, as I say, was developed by Dr. Ray Bowen. And some years ago he came to me at an ADA meeting at the Atlanta location that year and said, you know, Bob, I've got a fantastic Denton bonding agent. But he said it's got nine steps and nobody wants it. We took out a license from our patent from the American Dental Association and let our chemist work on it. And this is the product. It's uh, two bottles that are dropped at the time of application into a Dappen dish and we apply it to the teeth. Now we've already selected a shade on the patient. Right, Central? Jessica always calls out the name of the tooth. I want to show you the difference between the shade of the luminaire with the triangle paste and without because both of these will be the same shade. So what's the difference between the two? The one on the left has Ultra Bond triand paste in it, and that's going to be the true color we're going to end up with. If you just put these on without the triand paste, you get a different color, and that's because when light goes through a medium, it continues forward until it exceeds what they call the critical angle. When it hits the critical angle, it bounces back, and in this case, we're getting back a reflection on the edge surface of the porcelain. So to get the true shade, you want to use the Ultra Bond Triant Paste. It contains all the same ingredients as Ultra Bond, except it doesn't have any activator in it. You want to do that before you put Tenure S on the teeth. And now I'll start removing the Triant Paste. Jessica will use the Tenure S to remove the Triant Paste inside the luminaire. Now. What happens if she doesn't get it all out? Well, any resin that's remaining will be polymerized with the Tenier S. So if you're doing a try-in, don't put the Tenier S on first. Put it on after you've done your try-in and selected your shade. Coat all of your etched conditioned surface with resin because once you've conditioned your teeth, a race begins right central. A race begins between resin and contamination. In case you're wondering what this little device is, it was developed by another dentist, Dr. Omer Meeker in Pasadena, California. It's called a Lumigrip. It's nice and flexible. Give me the left central right after this. Right cuspid. And you see how easy it is to carry it to the tooth. And then it's nice and flexible. That's left central. Okay. Now we'll do the, do the left lateral first. What I'd like to do here right now is get that two millimeter tip because this left central seems to want to fumble around just a little bit. I want to hold it to place. Close your eyes. And what I'm doing here is just giving that two millimeter tip a one second spot cured. Left first by. Right first by. Always call out the name of the tooth, and I repeat it. So you heard me say left, and she corrected me and said it was right. So when I misspeak, she's my co-pilot. Brush. Now we will wipe off. See, this is on the runway getting ready for takeoff. And we just take out the excess here. Some people say, well, why don't you clean everything up and be all nice and neat? Now, my objective is to get a well-bonded, fixed luminaire. And I don't mind a little messy cleanup because just think what I didn't do. Close your eyes. 
to prepare this patient to receive porcelain veneers. Okay, close your eyes. And close your eyes. Left cuspid. First by. And I want to see a little bit oozing out all around these margins. Two millimeter tip for one second. Close your eyes. And I always say one tooth distal to the last tooth in the arch. Because I want to make sure then I don't in inadvertently polymerize some resin to prevent seeding of the adjacent tooth. What I'm going around here now is taking out some of the excess, but this prevents the luminaires from slipping around. So I'm gonna start over here, use the five millimeter, nine millimeter tip for five seconds. So in less than one minute, we will have bonded and placed 10 luminaires. I'm not trying to be fast. Well, today I'm not wasting any time. What I'm attempting to accomplish is to show you how you could be doing this back in your practice. It's all about getting ready and then doing it and not dilly-dallying and knowing what you're doing. So close your eyes. Now, I always have a lot of reservation on bonding to somebody who, who uh, already starts out with attractive teeth. You say, what have you got to win? I don't know. But I've always seen them coming back looking better. And I want to show everybody the lingual side here. Can you, can you all see how this looks on the lingual side? Okay. We'll take the paint on dental dam off and put a little pressure on that. And I'll just let you take a look right here at the. Okay, take a look at the lingual side. See, it's all cleaned up. Now I'll just take the football shaped diamond and remove the excess. And I go on the lingual side and blend the ultrabond and the porcelain and the tooth structure all together. So they're one solid homogeneous mass. And I'm just going around removing set ultrabond and porcelain And then I come over on the lingual side on the left. So you see what I'm doing here about removing this excess? I use four power magnification and I just start drilling on the tooth on the porcelain with medium grit diamond, a lot of water spray, you never want to build up heat. And then you can see when you get to the ultra bond, and you just gently shave it away. Okay. Now we've pretty much blended everything together. And there's still a little bit in those interproximals, but now we'll go to work on the labial. Now what I'm doing is taking the 12 fluted burr on the interproximal embrasures where I have the set ultra bond. And I remove all of that ultrabond. Now, a good practice for doing this is get one of your children's coloring books, or if you're a grandparent, get one of your grandchildren's coloring books and stay within the lines.
everybody looks at the finishing and they think it uh, is so much extra work. But they forget that I didn't spend any time doing preparations. And I want to use a long, narrow diamond here. I'm using a Shure 349 instrument here. How do you do it? Okay. And I'm just doing a little cosmetic contouring here. So you can do that if you don't like the contour. If somebody says, well, I saw those lumineers and they didn't look very good. Well, they just weren't finished. Show me a lumineer that doesn't look good, and I'll show you an unfinished one, and then I'll show you how to finish it. Then I come back with a 30 fluted burr, and I go over that surface, and I smooth it. And then you can repolish it and bring it right back to the luster that it had before you touched it. Now let's take a look at the lingual side, and what we have found is that we design a smile that looks attractive, and let's assume that their phonetics, about the only time that the length of the teeth is a factor is where they make the F sound. All the S's are on the back of the uh, palate. So I'm very concerned about phonetics. Okay, let's take a look at her occlusion now. That's very important. Close tight. Grind your teeth around. Open. And we'll see what we have for marks. You feel a little lump back here, don't you? That's the ultrabond in there on the extra tooth. So we'll get that out next. Okay. That, you see... Now I've got marks on the lingual side, natural teeth on natural teeth. And we're look at this down here. See this little mark on the mesial of that cuspid? The cuspids on the mandibular like to knock off the distals of the laterals when they go into protrusive. So you teach that to your patients, that if you want to move your teeth around, don't clench them. Learn how to use them. Let's take a look here on the lingual side. All right. Now, we're very close to being finished on this visit, so I'm going to open a few of the contacts, not all of them, because I don't want to bore you to death. Notice I removed the ultrabond on the labial surface. Now, here, when I want to open the contact, the secret is to getting most of the ultrabond out. And so I want a long, narrow diamond here. And if you have trouble getting through the contacts, it's because you left too much ultrabond in there. So that's where I go back and I open it, cosmetically contour it. I like to take those laterals and round them a little bit on the distal. And what I'm going to do right now is just open a couple of contacts for you. Now see how that went through that contact? I ran into some resistance, so I just went back and I took my four power magnification and I took my long narrow diamond. And see, and I'm going to go all around the arch and do that. But you're not going to watch me because you don't have time on this lecture schedule. Give me a Sari Sander. And then I come back where the saw got through and there's still rough edges of Ultramont in there. Now remember something, when she comes back, I can spend more time finishing. I don't have to have all the contacts open, but I open all the easy ones. It's like taking the test questions. Get the ones you know out of the way right away. 
but we have given her approximately what she wanted today. So that's what I do on the first visit with patients. So we're going to let you take a look at your teeth now. Like that? You want to keep those? I do. You sure you don't want me to take them off? Huh? You're positive. Here's your patient getting 10 porcelain veneers, laughing after an hour and a half. Okay. I chose to get lumineers just because um, I was always bleaching my teeth. I really wanted a permanent whitening. I had little discolorations on my teeth that I really wanted to get fixed, and I just wanted a bigger, broader smile. I would definitely not have gotten lumineers if they had to do any modifications to my teeth, any grinding down, or any shots. So this was perfect. There was absolutely no pain involved when they were placing my lumineers. It was actually um, very comfortable. It seems like it, the time just flew by. It actually was um, more pleasant than getting your fingernails done because usually the manicurist will chip around your cuticles and things like this. So this just went really smooth. They finished them and it was really absolutely no pain. So it was a really pleasant experience. Uh, it's really amazing how natural my teeth feel after the lumineers have been placed. It feels like they've been there um, the whole time, so it just you really can't tell a difference. Lumineers have really changed my life um, dramatically. They've really helped me with my confidence and I'm able to smile now and greet everybody with a warm, full, bright smile. And I really don't think I would have done it any other way. This was just such a simple way to get such a drastic improvement. I would definitely recommend Lumineers to my friends and family. I feel like anybody can benefit from this. This really um, helps people achieve the perfect smile.